welcome to the NBA True Views. I am your host, Norman Sanzo. Joining me today is Silver Quill. Oh, Sunper Sama, please notice me. Oh my. And it looks like we already have a fan for Sunburst. He's a very popular character. Especially today. Yes, indeed. And also joining us is Sapphire Heart Song. You can't have him, he's mine. He's my Sentai. I will hurt you. Oh. With the knife. Oh. I'm my. kidding. I'm, I'm kidding. I'm making a Yandere simulator type of thing. I know. And you're it's not really a reference because of the game is still in development, but you can, you know what I meant. Yes, we do. Please notice me, Sentai. <laughs> oh god, no, not that song. I've listened to it, oh god. <laughs> but eh. I still t- I still take the literal interpretation. Send pie. I'm very hungry. Silver. That was last week's episode. Well, yeah. Rainbow doesn't need it, so send it our way. Oh, true that. I could use something to eat. That rainbow confection of hers. Mm. Oh my. Yep, 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 yep. But anywho, in today's episode review, we are going to review season seven, episode twenty four, Uncommon Pawn. In this episode, Starlight Glimmer gets a visit from Sunburst and discover he has a lot in common with her friends, causing her to wonder if he still has anything in common with her. So, before we start, let's head into first impressions. And Silver, what do you think, man? I'm thinking Sunburst gets all the ladies. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and the male-to-female ratio in Ponyville is high. Is it low? I gotta imagine that there's some stallion looking around like, This is a stallion's paradise! Yep, until they discovered that the mares are not into the stallions. Lyra and Bonbon, we're looking at you. Well, I don't think Lyra and Bonbon are the entire town. That's in trouble. Oh, but that'd be great. All the <laughs> all the ones who would be interested are already married. <laughs> this is cake! No! <laughs> yes. Uh, but... Is that it, Silva? I think there's more to that. It's a fun episode. Uh, it's just fun to see Sunburst playing off all them. Trixie is especially adorable in all this. But I will say Sunburst comes off looking less than a good friend. And it takes a minute. I don't know if he ever fully owns up to that. But in a lot of ways, this is a lead into the season finale. And we shall, we shall cover that in good course. But uh, first impression was I had a lot of fun. Yep, fun is good. And Sappy, what about you? Every time I see this episode, I feel like I'm I'm more looking into uh, Starlight's perspective, and I'm just I want to hug her. Oh my goodness, this friend who she never sees, who is always in in the corner studying, and she is just now getting back to know after all the years of heartache is suddenly like, oh, I'm going to hang out with your other friends. And it's like, I want to give her a hug. Aww. Poor baby. <laughs> I can also see from the other perspective that, yes, Sunburst is just getting caught up in the moment and not realizing that he's hurting Starlight. I mean, there's a thing called communication. But at the same time, though, I feel bad for Starlight. Even when we get into spoiler territory, I feel bad for Starlight. It's okay. It's okay. It's a feel bad for Starlight episode for me. All right, then. It's okay. But and as for me, this episode was a lot of fun. I do like the interaction between Sunburst and the rest of Starlight's friend. Who knew that? You know what? I'm not gonna joke. We all knew that. Sunbus was a major nerd, but the things that he studies is really strange, from stage magic to geology. What? Hey, he's a jack of all trades. And myself, none. Ah, but having so much more fun. Ah, true that. But still, it's one of those cool things that, who knew, right? It's fun to see this episode because of the interaction between all of the characters, and... As for Sunbus himself, he he's interesting to see outside of some chaotic episode that involves Flurry Heart. But anywho, let's hit into the review. If you guys have not watched this episode yet, pause here and go watch. And welcome back. I hope you enjoyed the episode and let's get into it. We start off with our lead hero, Starlight. 
at the train station, wondering when is the noon train from the Crystal Empire going to arrive? I wonder, is it 11.59? Meanwhile, she's caught the Exposition Express, even though she's not on the train. Oh, no. Oh, no. It's the tragedy. It means you just start randomly talking about your history to anyone who'll listen, even the wall. Oh, no. Not the wall. Oh, but this is double because the, there's a pony behind the wall. Dun, dun, dun. Who might that be? The uh, conductor or hmm, what is the term for someone who works at a train station a... and, hel- and helps with timing? Uh, I forgot. I heard of it before in olden cartoons, but I don't remember it now. Snaps. I mean, the conductor is the only part of the train I know. Might want to ask Sheldon Cooper about that. Uh, while Silver goes looks for that, let's continue on. Um, the train arrives, and yay, Sunburst is here! And he's packing a lot of books. A lot of books. Hm. He's pulling a rarity. Yeah. Very much. Instead of dresses, it's all books. Books. They're all over the place. Oh my god. But still, they have fun. Um, Starlight brings... Sunburst to the antique shop, um, or is it the other way around? And yeah, they discover a few knickknacks in Ponyville. Who knew Ponyville had such a history with old stuff? Well, it has Granny Smith. What more do you need? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. She's one of the few living legends. And that is soon to change. Ha! Yep, soon to change indeed. <laughs> uh. But still, what else could we say? Hmm, yeah, uh, Twilight's there. Well, of course Twilight's there. It's old and no one wants to pay attention to it. I think I just described Twilight's retirement. <laughs> oh, that's just mean. It's true. Oh, Actually, it's not, but it just sounds <laughs> terrible. I know. You should feel bad. And yet, I persevere. <laughs> oh, you. Me. Yes. Okay, so Twilight, Twilight often takes interest that, yeah, the, the modern ponies, oh, these kids today. Yeah, and well, <clears throat> and well, um, it seems that Twilight and Sunburst hit it off. They enjoy looking at antiques while Starlight is bored. Like, who knew old stuff is boring? Well, you know, when I got this bunion back in 18 dickety <laughs> <clears throat> yes, mm, uh, but anywho, it's like was it was that a joke or did you step on a duck? <laughs> uh, no, <clears throat> but anywho, thank you, Silver. Uh, but but anywho, they arrive at the castle, um, carrying their loot, and yeah, it seems that they have a lot of stuff there. They bought like a cup, a phoenix feather. Even a, whatchamacallit, this, um, what did he bought? Like, I don't remember. Something, something, something. Let's see. Something, something, dark side? (laughs) Yes. Well, let's see here. He bought an ancient pony butter knife, and Twilight bought a a phoenix feather quill. Ooh, that actually sounds like a good screen name. Maybe I should change mine. Phoenix feather quill. No. And there's another. So now they can be pen pals. And they're already at the hugging stage. Ah, the shipping senses are tingling. Oh, no. Oh, gosh. But anywho, Sunburst bought a barrel, and inset barrel is unknown. Starlight questions his purchase by saying, you bought something you don't know? And Sunburst says, it's a mystery. It's called a loot box. Every month you pay for it, and you'll get a mysterious prize that's worth the price of admission. You should do it. And then Jim Sterling will make 50 videos complaining about it. <laughs> oh, yes. Oh, yes. But still, that's besides the point. Uh, so Starlight thinks fast and introduces a board game from her youth. And said board game is Monopoly. I mean, no, it's Dragon Pit. Dragon Pit. Oh, for some reason, all I'm thinking of is Mousetrap, which never worked. Really? Sefi, have you ever played Mousetrap? Um, I did once. And? I I know the concept of the game, sort of. You you have to play as a mouse and then make it to the end without, well, getting trapped under a not-working box. 
<laughs> Seriously, I, I've seen those traps. They almost never work like they should. Yeah. I mean, it's a cool concept, but it'd be cooler if they actually worked. For point of reference for our audience, I here have not played Mousetrap before, so the concept is really foreign for me. Well, I find it fun because that's what I see, and it actually works. It actually, this is a game where the traps actually work. What for Dragon Pit or Mousetrap? For Dragon uh, Pit, right. Mousetrap never. <laughs> Safi's right. Mousetrap never worked. <laughs> that's why we know this is a fantasy show. You know what could fix Mousetrap? Alcohol. <laughs> that and also I got no idea house rules. But you know what Hasbro should really do? Stop takedown notices against YouTube videos. <laughs> That and also make you. Uh, <laughs> wee -oo, wee -oo, wee -oo. <laughs> uh, let me get to my Tokyo. Uh, no, it's more fun to see you break down like this. I'm having too much fun with that. Uh, that and also make Dragon Pit a real board game. <sighs> that could actually work. I mean, assuming. Assuming lots of things. Mm hmm. And put it on a Kickstarter. <laughs> Although, wouldn't that be something like, uh... My kid put his eye right over the volcano and the marble poked him! Oh no! Yeah, because your kid was doing something dumb. <sighs> How dare you! <laughs> I'm triggered! Whee! Ah, but anywho, getting right back on track. Okay, okay, real quick though, Norman. That was a very whimsical ree <laughs> with the R rolling and all that stuff. Just, just had to commentate on that, man. <laughs> okay. Yes, it's a fine addition to the review. <laughs> yes, but anywho, um, <clears throat> started introduce the board game Dragon Pit, and everybody on the table played. Uh, we have Starlight, Sunburst, and Twilight. They started playing, and yeah, all of all of them three played the game before when they were fillies. And Starlight mentioned that Sunburst was really excited when his dragon got caught in the trap. And speak of the devil, his dragon got caught in the trap, and it seems that Twilight was the one getting really excited. And apparently you get a little too excited and your horn explodes. I promise that does not happen all the time. Yeah, so there's nothing very Freudian about this. <laughs> yes. Uh, but anywho, after said... You know, sometimes I wonder who has the dirtier mind in this review. Either you guys or me. Mm, it's the grand challenge. One never knows what lurks beneath the surface. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But besides that, let's go to bed. Uh, when, I mean, <clears throat> when I mean go to bed, I mean Sunburst is going to bed because he had a long trip from the Crystal Empire and he wants some rest. Uh-huh, sure, that's all what you mean. Indeed. So, Starlight here mentions that, hey, probably we, tomorrow we can do something fun together and whatnot. And Sunburst here mentions, like, yeah, tomorrow's fun. I hope Twilight can join. Uh, Twilight's going to be fun. Let's see what Twilight can do for us. Twilight, Twilight, Twilight. Twilight. And yeah, Red Flag's already up. And it's like, I won't let that hussy come in and take my maybe boyfriend. <laughs> Harumph! Yeah. Like, he has his own boyfriend in an alternate universe. She could go for that. Mm, don't steal my horse bundle. But still, uh, by this point, you can already tell that Sunburst here is not really thinking of Starlight by the way he's talking. And what he's mentioning about nobody really understands me and whatnot, blah, blah, blah. And you can visibly see that Starlight is hurt. Seppi, go hug her. Seppi, glomp attack. <laughs> yes, it works. So, yeah. Zephyr used Glump. It was mildly effective. <laughs> but, anyway, what do you guys think of this? Like, am I correct to say that Sunburst is, um, was insensitive here? Well, he was... He was a little bit insensitive. We'll get to full-blown jerkery later. Honestly, I mean, he, he, did, he was mindful of Starlight in the antique shop, saying, you don't have to pretend... If you're uninterested. So I think he, at this point he's still mindful. The commentary, oh, not many ponies get me or not many ponies uh, understand. Uh, let's see, what, what was his exact word choice? <clears throat> let's see here. Dur, dur, dur. Oh, let's see. I'm just surprised. 
I don't have much in common with most ponies. There's a there's a hint of vulnerability in that. So I don't think he's being a jerk per se, but he's definitely starting to, he's so excited he's forgetting whom he came to see in the first place. True that, true that. And it happens to the best of us. Yeah. But anywho, that's besides the point. So, um, Star mentioned that, hey, uh, we'll do something fun to, in the morning. And at 3 a.m., still morning, Starlight wakes Sunburst up. And yay, they're going to do something fun and whatnot. And Twilight's not invited. She cannot be with us. Let's go. And I find this hilariously cute how how Sunburst tells Starlight to, you know, turn around or preferably get out because I want to change. Yes, how scandalous. Yes. He's not wearing his cloak. <laughs> Yes, and I think he suffers from what we all, or what all male suffers. Shrinkage during the cold? Uh, no, not that one. The other one, you know, when you wake up. Oh, now, Norman. Here I'm I... wide awake. I don't know. I, did, I don't know if he set up a tent with those custom uh, blankets. You notice that he's got the same star pattern as his, uh, his cape? So, did he bring that with him from the Crystal Empire? Nah, I think Starlight was mindful enough to set up... Um, beach sheets that look like his um, cloak or it could be the default cloak in the castle hmm. I don't know but anywho um, let's head to the first adventure and adventure it's all about apples you know even in an episode without apple jack we still get apples apple 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 yep apples and the only reason why starlight brought Sunburst here is just because when they were kids, they drink a lot of apple juice or apple cider for you picky people. It's very concerning when that's your only excuse to make any sort of connection. We used to drink applesauce from or something. Remember? <laughs> right, right, right. Remember when we had water? <laughs> Yeah, I remember those days. It was fun. But did you guys remember the day that when we shared air? Oh, that was fun. But you want to know what we don't share? Friends? A freaking time zone. Oh, yes. Isn't that isn't that part of the fun? <laughs> oh, yes. And, yeah. But, but talking about friends. Uh, yeah. Starlight here bucks a tree. And, yay. Hits an apple on Trixie. What? And... Yay! <laughs> Wait a minute. Yeah, and yeah, there's this thing called trespassing. I'm pretty sure they're all doing that. Uh, I'm surprised that Applejack's not up yet because by this time right now, uh, she would be around bucking apple trees. Hmm? She maybe she's on the other side of the farm, mm -hmm. waiting for yeah, the really. There are acres upon acres of apples, apples, apples. Mm -hmm. But anywho, uh, Trixie mentions that I do magic. You want to see? And Sunburst says, yay, magic! I would like to see magic. And from that point on, montage about how uh, they both click. And Starlight here is just, oh god, not again. Uh, let's see. Oh gosh. Okay, I'm going to drag you away to something. And that something is the mirror pool. And yay, um... I'm sure that Starlight did something really bad by breaking the seal, but yeah, who's going to jump into the pool, right? Like, I mean, Pinky's not going to jump in there again, right? One never knows. But if I could just double back to the, the magic practice, Starlight was, or Trixie was just adorable, shaking her head at the card trick that just wasn't working. Mm -hmm. We're so used to her being sort of condescending or, or maybe a little snide towards others, but... She was just flipping adorable at that moment. Yeah, and well, I think they click because, oh, another fellow uh, magic enthusiast, and it's not Twilight Sparkle. Hmm. So that's fun to see, just fun to watch, just to see um, Trixie be nice and get along with someone other than Starlight. So yay. But with the mirror pool, Starlight's starting to go off the deep end. Oh, yeah. We can clone ourselves and have way more time together. Way more time. They see. But now try to picture like 50 starlights going, Sunburst, 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 Sunburst. In an alternate reality, that would be so awesome for him, but not this one. So anywho, um, while they were in the uh, cave with the mirror pool, they hear knocking. And it seems that Mod Pie is there. 
And what do you know? Sunburst seems to be an expert in rocks. Great. And with that, Starlight leaves. And let Sunburst and Mod have fun. Yay. Yeah, this is where Sunburst, I think, goes into full insensitivity. Uh, yeah. Now he's completely uh, blocking her from participation, it seems. I don't really think so for this one. I blame the montage because of that. But in all honesty, <coughs> Sunburst is just enjoying the sights and sound of Ponyville and what it has to offer. And what it offers is pretty interesting. It's just the montage is framing it that way. Later on in the episode, he did mention that he wanted to show Starlight something, but she, when he noticed uh, she was gone, so it's not really his fault, I think. But still, he's pretty insensitive for uh, hanging around with other mares. <coughs> well, I mean, seeing friends, that's not necessarily insensitive, but you he went to Ponyville to meet with Starlight. And no matter how excited he is, there is a there is an insensitivity and he's not trying to include her. I don't feel like he really, until that moment you mentioned, I feel like he got so swept up he actually forgot Starlet was there. It's like, that mean. Oh. Why is that mean? Yeah. Oh, dear. But still, um, how is rock exciting? Well, because every rock tells a story. True. The strata, the composition... It's just, if are you willing to look and see? Or do you know what to look at? Yeah, probably. Do you, do do you, you take, take this history for granted? Mm. <laughs> oh, God, I guess I just got that. Oh, thank you, Silva. But... <laughs> Shale and well met. <laughs> but hey, anywho, um, uh, we go back to the castle and we see that, hey, um, Starlight's at the table moping and Twilight asks, what are you doing here? Where's Sunburst? And... Starlight just complains about how she couldn't find anything in common with Starlight anymore. He has more in common with her friends instead of her. And Twilight mentions that, hey, uh, don't you two uh, like magic? So maybe that could mm, um, connect you guys again. And with that, Starlight gives Twilight a hug and, uh, and goes to the throne room and writes a spell. Which then transports her to a mystical dimension where Celestia breaks into song and shows her a montage of her life. And then suddenly, Alicorn Starlight is born. What, 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 what? No, that didn't happen. It will. Oh, maybe. yeah, totally. Maybe it should have, just to get the fandoms going. What? <laughs> no, what happens in reality is Sunburst comes in and says, Starlight, where have you been? I wanted to show you something, and then you were gone. And Starlight just mentions, oh, I was here writing a magic spell. You want to see? You want to see? And she activates the spell. And they're transported back to home. So, yay, that's fun. And another part of the spell transformed them into Philly and Colts. Hmm. Because that's not creepy. Yeah, indeed. Um, hmm, yes. And this, <laughs> talking about this not creepy... Um, it creeps the heck out of Sunburst, and he says, I don't want to play this game. No! And with that, it hurts Starlight's feeling, and she runs off. So, yeah. This is the only time where even I say yes. That's not a word! Starlight's feelings. <laughs> Sweetie Wait. Bot's the only guy get me this time. <laughs> yeah, Sweetie Bot's gonna be all like, that's not a word! It is! But anywho, Sunburst is consulting with Twilight, and it seems that, well, um, have you tried to look for something you have in common and whatnot? I mean, come on, you're friends with her friends, so it's, it has to say something about you guys. And with that, Sunburst goes around talking to all of Starlight's friend and finding a way to cheer her up. I gotta say, Trixie needs to work on her... Uh her sawed in half pony. I mean, at least clean the dang fake legs. Yeah, true that, true that. And also, what? It's still better than her trying to fire herself into a manticore. Oh yeah, true that too. And also they're smart, polishing rocks and weighing them. But in the end, Sunburst decides to do something. And to do that something, he enlists the help of Twilight to get Starlight to the uh, library. I think there's a library, right? Well, yep, it's the library in the castle, and Starlight breaks a hole in the floor. Great. 
But I have to explain why the reason Starlight broke a hole in the floor. And that's because Sunburst decides to make a LARP version of uh, Dungeon Pit. Yay. And it is pretty adorable. I will say ponies and costumes make everything cuter. And yay. Uh, and with that, Sunburst explains that, hey, um, I thought this would cheer us up because, hey, we, we love to play Dragon Pit. And yeah, th- this would be fun. Like all of us friends playing this game together. And with that, Starlight says that, yeah, this game is missing something because uh, the dragon got caught and he didn't fell down. Let me fix that. Revenge is sweet. And meanwhile, Twilight's off to the side like, that's my floor! Why does everyone keep breaking my castle? First those dang yaks and now this? I mean, come on! Oh, there's Ember. Don't come forget. On! And then there's Ember. She's eating my castle. Stop eating my castle. <laughs> yeah. And after all that time, uh, it's time for Sunburst to head back to the Crystal Empire. And yeah, they understand that and even though we grown up and whatnot, that doesn't mean that our friendship need to change. We just roll with the time and whatnot. And they all hugged and yay, they sent Sunburst off to, yeah, they see Sunburst off. And with that, and Sunburst opens a book from the barrel and yeah, he starts reading. And we get a snippet to what's to come. A dusty old book. Yes, he gets, he gets the legendary skin. Woo. Oh, I've been wanting that one. I gambled so hard. I mean, bought so many boxes. I mean, how lucky am I? <laughs> hey, what game was this? <laughs> oh, you know, he's just keeping an overwatch on things. <laughs> and with that, episode ends. Ah, uh, so... I, I can't tell if Safi is, is laughing, growling, or drinking milk. <laughs> <laughs> laughing, but trying to hold it back. No, don't. Release it. No. Yeah. It's a beast which must not be released. Oh, come on, Safi. Don't fear the Reaper. <laughs> well, now I can't laugh anymore. Oh, sure you can. That joke was lame. Was not lame, or if it was, you showed mercy. Because <laughs> I, I had the best intentions at Reinhardt. <laughs> I have a terrible laugh. No. <laughs> Meanwhile, you're acting like such a diva. <laughs> Look at this team. We're going to do great. <coughs> but anywho, uh, then that's the end of the review. Uh, so I'm still trying to think of a Doomfist pun that doesn't uh, doesn't sound like a sex joke. <laughs> it's surprisingly difficult. Uh, <laughs> I'm trying to think of one too, but I can't. But anywho. Uh, yep, we're being very foul today. <laughs> very foul. <laughs> So far. Oh, boys. But anywho, final thoughts. Silver, what do you think, man? What can I say? It's fun. It's nice to see Starlight not... This was just before Starlight uh, had her crowning moment as understanding the enemy. You know, re- recognizing her own faults and empathizing with another. But this was an episode where it wasn't about that. It was just her... Why be with a friend? Being vulnerable, not for, oh, what was me and my tragic past. No, this is my friend, but I'm having trouble connecting with them. And it's nice to see her that way. And it's nice to see uh, all of Starlight's friends getting along with Sunburst. That group hug is wonderful at the end. Especially with Trixie so all into it and Ma just like, okay, this is happening. And given the fact that Trixie worked on the rock farm very briefly. Oh, yeah. How well does she know Maud? I don't think well because they haven't met before. Um, in uh, if I yeah, but but in the rock farm flashback, I mean oh yeah, she met Pinky's father. Yeah, she met Ignis, but I think at that time Maud was off at college, the rock college, so they totally miss each other. Oh, I will have to disagree because that was season three and we didn't meet Maud until season four. Yeah, and she yes. graduated and the, and there's, in season five, right? Or is it seven? No. Yes, but, but she didn't leave for her rock to it until season four. So here we are arguing. She graduated like, during season seven. But, but she left for her rock to it, I mean. 
Yes. You know what? It's man takes. Uh, that's another discussion for another day. Uh, probably we'll do when did Trixie met Maud. Although, and we could just argue about uh, timing, like true nerds. This is full on nerd talk. Uh, pocket protectors for all. <laughs> Yay! And tape glasses. Yeah, tape glasses are in thing now, right? You mean they weren't? <laughs> uh, yes. <clears throat> so is that all silver? I think there's more, right? Just that it was a lot of fun. It leads into the finale. Yeah. I mean, the biggest downer for me is that you feel like, ah, Sunburst, we're acting like Starlight's the one with the problem, but you're not helping mm -hmm, mm -hmm. at all. And Seppi, what do you think? How do I word this in the most comedic way possible? With a fart joke. <laughs> <laughs> ah, screw it. Anyway... Starlight did have a bit of a problem, but you could have helped a little bit more there, buddy. That would have been nice. I know this is a show about friendship, and this is how the show goes. However, in this episode especially, communication is key, people. Nobody seems to learn that. Honestly, they've not learned that in seven seasons. I just... It's funny that I still think the Phillies of Equestria are better communicators than the adults. Yes. You know, in in the final season of MLP, they should at least finally get the closure that they learn the one most important thing about any relationship, no matter if it's intimate or, you know, in the friendships or the families. Communication, people. Yes. Communication is everything. Yes. That is all. And as for me, I like this episode. This episode was a lot of fun. And it did, it did highlight a few things for me personally when I see the relationship between Sunburst and Starlight. Because, well, we all had friends way back in the day. And when even nowadays, uh, we haven't met them in a while. And somehow we lost touch. Suddenly we get back with them. And yeah, yeah, we go thinking that, hey, maybe they still like the same thing that they liked before. And suddenly realize that, uh, wait, what? You don't like Yu-Gi-Oh anymore? What? Why? Oh, okay. So what do you like now? Oh, there. And they probably say, oh, I, I don't play Yu-Gi-Oh anymore. I don't play card games anymore because I don't have the money and stuff. So it, you, you'll be having a hard time finding a common connection there. And this episode says that even though you don't have anything in common anymore, that doesn't mean that you can't be friends. You just need to rediscover your connection and bond over something else. So yay, that's an awesome way to look at the lesson for this one. And a great thing is that Sunburst here has new friends in Trixie and Maud and even Twilight. So with that, they have a new connection and new bonds to do something. Maybe probably go to a board game convention. Who knows? They'll probably play a life-size version of Monopoly. Yay. And other than that, love the episode. Love the um, subtle humors in this one. Much, much fun. And well, that's my thoughts. So anyhow, um, Silver, what are we going to do next week? Well, it is the end times for us. Oh, no. The end of season seven. <gasps> Ooh. We finally are going to tackle the shadow play. Oh, finally. The thing that was mentioned in issue 51 is going to have a big payoff. Awesome. Big payoff. Big, 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 big payoff. Did we review issue 51? Uh, I think we did, right? I believe so. Again, I guess. Yes, I believe yeah, so. Yeah, we were on. The, the last thing we did was issue 57. We need to do 58. But that's another time for another day. But anywho, yeah. Uh, remember way back when when the shadow uh, ponies of shadow was mentioned and how his uh, mere mention is going to bring him back and whatnot. Everybody's so scared of yeah. him. Yeah, uh, it, it seems like that comic there didn't pay off anything at all. Like you, <laughs> how do I even mention this? That comic there was null and void. <laughs> we can talk about that in the actual episode yes, review. Yes, a yes, a. Uh, I just had to mention yeah. it because I have been holding a grudge on that one for a while now. But anywho, yes, that will be next week's review thingy show. So um, if you guys at home would like to support the show, you can do so at patreon.com. 
www.thepodcastnetwork.com. With every support, you'll get a week's early access to the review and discussion podcasts, and exclusive and deleted content. And a huge thank you from me. Talking about thank yous, I would like to thank Lurker Cat, Starstream, myself, Lag, Amy, Mark, Charles, Lucky Knight, and also Tristan. Thank you guys for supporting the show. You have been really awesome to me. And Sappy, you want to give a shout out? Buy me coffee at coffee.com slash anime Christy. That's it. All righty then. And what about yourself, Silver? Oh, you guys can find me on YouTube and DeviantArt. I have a I have links to my Patreon on my videos. And you know, just want to keep producing content for the fandom. Yep, yep. It's all good content, yow. And also check out his DeviantArt. Like, he does updates all the time with every new episode that comes out. He does the Pinkie Pie uh, Sis, was it? Oh, Pinkie Pie Sis or what? Pinkie Pie says goodnight. Yeah, that thing. Pinkie Pie says goodnight. Yes, it's good time. Yeah. yeah. You should watch. It's good time for the Pinkie yeah, Pie. You should watch. It's much fun. So, anywho, I have been Norman Sanzo. I am Cecilia Quill. And I have been Bill Cipher. And we'll catch you guys next week with another episode of Yes Show. See ya. Notice me, senpai. Bye bye. We'll meet again. Don't know where. Don't know when. But I know we'll meet again some sunny day. Woo-hoo. Hey. Yeah, I'll you back.